I'm attorney Justin Clark. Coming up just ahead on You Have Real Estate, Orlando rental prices on the rise yet again. Now is the time to buy, not to rent. I'm going to tell you how to do so with two of the best agents in town. It's all just ahead. It's You Have Real Estate. If you've been threatened by the IRS, you're not helpless. I'm attorney Justin Clark. You have the power to fight wage garnishments and to fight levies on your account. Call me now for a free consultation or visit youhavepower.com and take back control of your life. This is a special offer from IQ Power Solar. Stop paying high electric bills with a solar power system from IQ Power Solar. And now it's never been easier. IQ Power Solar can give you immediate electric bill relief right now when you go solar. IQ Power Solar will reimburse you for your very next electric bill. Plus, if you're a first responder, IQ Power Solar will pay your program payment for the rest of the year. Call 407-585-1018 now or visit iqpowersolar.com. And welcome to You Have Real Estate with me, attorney Justin Clark. Whether you're a first time home buyer, seasoned investor, a renter, or even looking to sell your home, this next 30 minutes is designed just for you. Think of like hitting multiple open houses off from your living room, but with my attorney advice throughout the way. Any questions whatsoever, I have people standing by to answer them. The phone number's on the screen. It will remain on the screen the whole time. 407-205-0400. If you wanna start your house hunt, in this competitive market, you will need to get pre-approved. Dallas Lehman is literally sitting by his phone right now to get you pre-approved to start that house hunt. Great show for you today. You will not want to miss one single minute, but first, the opening statement. The opening statement today is brought to you by my good friends at IQ Power Solar. During these summer months, my electricity bill, $50 a month. Two years ago, $500 dollars a month. Also, when it comes to paying my IRS bill at the end of the year, when I went solar, I saved $10,000. Stephen Bader tells us how we did it. This new program offers you a 40-year transferable warranty on the product, their performance, the workmanship, the labor. That is the best warranty that's ever been flirted with in this sector, ever, hands down, right? We're giving you a production guarantee. If we promise it's going to produce something and it produces less, we'll cut you a check for the difference. We're giving you a home value increase guarantee. If we tell you that it's going to increase your home value $23,000 and the appraiser is stuck at 20, we cut you a check for the difference. Okay. Trade-in program. In 10 years, if you want a cool new system or you want to add stuff up, you have loyalty credits to where you have 50% of your system. If you spent 40 grand, you have $20,000 to trade in and trade up. Okay. If, if you have, if you move, if you sell the house, the credits stay with the homeowner not the home. So if you don't trade up, you sell the house and you move to a new home, you have those credits to go to a, a new system on a new home, right? And if you move into a house that's not qualified for solar, you can then get cash back instead of a trade up. So we, we, we spent four years developing this program. Customer loyalties for add-ons. You want to add a battery later. You want to add a new water heater. You just got a pool. You want to add solar pool heat. You can literally do this with no cost if you're in our customer loyalty program. And most importantly, if you spent $35,000 today and you go through our program on the 15th year, if, if you haven't used any credits or anything like that, we will cut you a check for the entire cost of your system. I can't think of a better time than now to save money, save the environment, and you can do so at 407-205-0400. Today is all about you renters. And again, I, I'm not judging you for renting. I rented for many years. I get it. And I understand sometimes life is just not in a perfect spot where we can go qualify for a house. Few things I want you to know. Number one, you've heard rumors about it being so difficult to qualify for a mortgage. It is not. This is not 2010. You can qualify if you have some decent credit and you have some income coming in. It is worth trying. I don't want you to be scared to try. I know many of you think, well, I don't want to see my credit report. I'm embarrassed to see my credit report. I think that you're making a mistake because here's what I see happening. The rental market in Central Florida has gone completely and totally out of control. And I've been telling you for two years it was already out of control, but it's just getting worse and worse. And by worse and worse, I mean for those of you that are renting, the market has gone so up. Let me give you some stats on the rental market here. 
Average rent in Orlando, you wanna take a guess? What is the average rent right now in Orlando? $1,509 per unit, up 13.8% from last year alone. 8,000 units have been rented in Orlando in the first half of 2021, 30% more units than any year in the history of Orlando. The rental market is going out of control. Well, Justin, I don't feel like my family's in a stable place to buy a home. Do you know that buying a home for you and your family is way more safe than renting? Once you buy that house, if heaven forbid we lose a job or something happens to us financially, the bank then has to foreclose on you. The foreclosure can take a year, two years, three years. Whereas if you're renting and God forbid something happens to your financial health, the landlord just has to evict you, which can happen in a couple weeks maybe a month, it happens much faster. So not only is it cheaper right now to own a house, it is also more safe and protective of your family to own a house. And it, it, it really is simple math, okay? You go look and see what you can buy a two bedroom or rent a two bedroom apartment for, 14, 15, $1,700. You go look and see what the mortgage, when I say mortgage payment, I mean P-I-T-I, principal, interest, taxes, and insurance is going to be if you go buy a 300,000 dollar house. On 300 grand, your PITI payment, owning the house is probably somewhere around 1300, 14, significantly less than what the rental payment is going to be per month. Don't be afraid to check the credit. Don't be afraid to try to buy a house while these interest rates are still very low. I do see them going up. Maybe later this year, certainly next year, I think the interest rates are going to go up. Now is the time to buy a home. And we're going to answer those questions and more by asking real questions every Saturday here on the TV show. We ask real questions to the trend-setting people in Central Florida's real estate community. Happy to have back. The, the guys are back today. We're all, all the guys here today. Alex Stefano. Alex, how are you, buddy? Good to see you. I'm good, Justin. Thanks Frank, for having me. Frank Benevento, welcome back. Good to Thank see you, you again. Good to see you. So, hey, again, you don't have to take my word for it. I like to talk to the people who are our actual real estate agents down in the trenches to tell us what's going on in this market. Alex, I'll start with you. I mean, yeah, it's tough out there, but have you seen the rental prices? And then when you are working with someone to purchase a home, can't you almost guarantee that the mortgage payment on the same house is gonna be less than the rental payment? Absolutely. You know, we you get us involved early, things are moving so fast and these rental properties you know what's here today yeah. might not be here at the end of the, at the end of today actually. So what are you seeing down in the trenches right now? So we hear you know twenty offers, thirty offers per house. Is that still sight what? unseen? Even really? people are calling from up north. They're making over asking price offers, sight unseen, waiving inspections, waiving appraisals. Is this um, the New York thing, the California thing coming here, or what? What do you think is creating this unbelievably crazy real estate market? I've got to think that's that's yeah. the drive, at least one of the driving forces. Obviously, interest rates and Florida's beautiful. Yeah. Who doesn't want to live in Florida? <laughs> Frank, we've been talking a lot about the mortgage interest rates are still low, still really kind mm -hmm. of an all-time low. Um, my theory has been they will probably creep up over the maybe later this year, certainly next year. I hope they don't, but I think that they will. I mean, what are you seeing right now in the interest rate world? Are you seeing the rates stay low? Or are, you, are you seeing people get to qualify? Or what's going on? They appear to be pretty steady right yeah. now. Um, it's just a matter of time before they do creep up, I think probably by the end of the year. But it'll still be a buying environment because mm -hmm. interest rates are still, in my estimation, historically low. Right. And Florida has been, as I mentioned last time, has been this part of central Florida, really been rediscovered. I mean, we've been undervalued, I feel, yeah. quite honestly. And it's something we've talked, I mean, I've talked to you about this a thousand times. In 2006 was the, the prior peak of the market. Now, 2006 was 15 years ago, a long time. And really just last year, maybe early this year, we got back to 2006 prices 16 years later. So while, yes, it looks to you like the real estate market has gone up because it has, we're really just barely above 2006 prices, which were certainly overinflated then. But I think this market, if you look comparatively to, to other states and where we have been, while I understand the market is up, I don't think it's an unfair, overly inflated market. I really don't. I don't think so either. I mean, like I said, I definitely feel as though it's been undervalued. I mean, I have people visiting me from New York and California, and even now they say this is a bargain. Yeah, <laughs> I know. And, and look, if you're coming from other parts of the country, 
even at the rate where the market is now, they're shocked. They're like, I can't believe this house is only worth that much money, right? With land attached to it. With land. You know, that they don't have. And really. not only that, if you look at our, even our taxes, our real estate taxes, comparatively, we are way less. We're somewhere right in the middle, all right? We're somewhere right in the middle, but we live in a state that has no state income tax. So you would think that our real estate or property taxes would be super expensive, because we don't have a state income tax. But if you look, I can tell you we're right around 24 in the nation. So somewhere right in the middle. You compare it to Connecticut or New Jersey real estate taxes, our taxes here are cheap. They are. Oh, yeah, I think sure. I mean, I, I'm, I'm sort of bullish on, on Florida as a, as a real estate investment, but no doubt I'm bullish on you are investing in real estate on your primary home. We can have the debate about is it a great time to buy investment property or not. Certainly on a primary home, certainly if you're a renter, uh, I would not be scared to buy in this current market down here in Florida. Even though we had that horrible hurricane roll through earlier in the week, you know, that was scary. <laughs> I think we're going to make it. <laughs> oh, no, you guys made it through okay, I guess? <laughs> Excellent. All right, let's see some properties here. People want me to shut up half the time and just show them real estate. So I think it's time that we're going to do that. Uh, Ryan, I think we're going to start on 23017. Frank, I want you to say that word. 23017 Equus Lane. Equus. So, Equus. I was Got just it. testing you, buddy. I, okay. I knew how to say it. I just wanted to make sure you did. <laughs> this is out in Eustis, a town I know pretty well. Tell me about this. Wow, what a property. So this is a prominent builder's personal, personal residence. It's 10 acres, and the detail is absolutely astounding. <clears throat> Excuse me, 2.425 million, 10 level acres, 7,300 square feet, mm. an absolutely astounding, one-of-a-kind Aspen-style ranch, all one level. It is beyond belief, and it is a very uncommon type of home. That's that Lake helps. County. Lake County is a booming area it as is. well. I guess we're all kind of booming, but Lake <clears throat> County, I see especially as a, as a really progressive, booming area for real estate. It is, and because people are no, no, normal progression is people going from Seminole to Volusia to Lake. Yeah. So you really cannot get this type of property that I'm aware of in Seminole County or even Orange for that matter. You've kind of become known as uh, a, a real estate agent that <clears throat> handles pricier homes, I would right. say. How have you developed that reputation? It's just happened over the past 10, 15 years. I mean, I have no problem handling a 400,000 yeah. or $300,000 home, but this is just the way it's evolved over the past 10, 15 years and I've had a lot of success with it. How are negotiations different <coughs> when you are a, a listing agent, when you're listing a, right. a $2.5 million home versus a $300,000 home? How, how is that process different? They're a little bit different because everybody has different objectives. Um, people get emotional with a lot of these mm -hmm. deals and I always tell them, please pull out the emotion because this is a business transaction. So I, they, you, know, you have to really get in the heads of each of your sellers to figure what it's gonna take for them to understand it over here. But at the end of the day, we got to do the best for everybody. Sometimes in law, they'll always say the, you know, the client that's paying 100,000 is easier to deal with than the client that pays $1,000 or something like that. Is, do you notice that in real estate that when, you, when you're working on a bigger deal, sometimes they can actually be easier than the smaller ones? Occasionally, you yeah. know, every scenario is different. There's no standard boilerplate answer for that. Right. Um, but. Everybody's different. You know, some people have attitude and no matter what you do, it's tough to overcome it. And then some people are pretty complacent and they really handle it and they trust in the process of the real estate agent. You deal with that in real estate too, huh? Attitudes? I'm shocked. Oh, yeah, we do. <laughs> we do. Uh, all right. Awesome property there. If you're looking for a, an actual <coughs> exquisite property in uh, Eustis out in Lake County, that's a great one. And by the way, Frank would be happy to show you this property if you call him now, 407 2050400. Also now Longwood, Florida. This is Oak Brook Drive. Tell me about this one, Frank. So this is a short sale in Aliqua Lakes. It's about 4,100 square feet. It is uh, bank approved at $805,000. Uh, actually, an incredible opportunity. Um, there are certain nuances to a short sale mm -hmm. that a lot of people don't understand. There's a lot of time you need. And a property like this can take over a year, quite honestly, to get bank approved. In this case, there were two lenders. And what it basically is is that the owner owes more than the property is valued at. But it's definitely a financial opportunity at that price on a per square foot level. Right. Great they, house. We did, I don't know, 10,000 short sales back <clears throat> in the day. But I haven't seen a whole lot of short sales here recently. No. How do you think this one ended up a short <clears throat> sale? Well, he just barred against it. Yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
he borrowed against it, and unfortunately, in that day, what was he, we, <laughs> you know, he owed mm -hmm. like one, two, or something like right. that. And the house is probably closing on a million dollars with a few dollars into it. Is that right? And not quite, you know, 300 and something dollars yeah. square foot just yet. Got it. And a great neighborhood, too. If you don't know Longwood, the Aliqua Lakes area is a fantastic part of, of Longwood up in Seminole County. Great oh, yeah. schools and things. And sometimes if you can get a short sale, what Frank's saying, it, bank approved means you're not starting from scratch with the lender. The lender has actually said, okay, homeowner, I will take this much. I will take 805000 Now, things could still come up, but it's always better, I think, if you, as a buyer to start on a short sale that's already bank approved versus just starting from scratch. It shouldn't take a year. Basically, put it that way. It shouldn't, but it uh, can. Also, back up in the Markham Woods corridor, let's say, is Langham Terrace Heathrow, a neighborhood I know well. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. So this isn't Heathrow. This is in the reserve. It's a wonderful home, a great family home. It's got a um, four bedrooms, about 33, a little over 3,300 square feet, extremely and meticulously maintained, an upstairs bonus room, um, three bedrooms on the main level, one upstairs, a lot of detail, very traditional flair. Just an incredible house, really wonderful. And the price point on here, I'm sorry. How uh, this is? one is um, seven fifty nine. Gotcha. Seven. I mean, that's pretty good for the reserve at Heathrow, I think, in, in today's current market, right? Oh yeah. What are you seeing in Heathrow right now? Are things flying off the shelf? Oh God, I can't keep them. Really? Yeah. What, so how many days? You list a house today. Alex, what, what do you think? You, you list a house today, you're getting calls today. All right, you invited me on the show last week. Yeah. I had a whole portfolio of properties <laughs> we're going to show today. <laughs> they're, uh, go gone. they're all gone. Everything's gone. And this is something I'm and having a lot with agents that come on here is they say, look, man, uh, I, they're all under contract. And I'm like, well, let's at least kind of show people what's out there because one day, these houses are, are going under and contract. And that's kind of why I'm really glad I'm here. Like I said, everything we have is gone. We've got a new yeah. listing. I want to show that in a minute. But I concentrate mostly in the Lake Mary yeah. Sanford, up and down the Markham Woods corridor. If you've got places you want to sell and you don't want to go through the listings mm -hmm. and having 30, 40 people come to your house the first week, get in touch with me because we've right. got buyers for all these neighborhoods. I mean, we can negotiate the prices. Right. Um, but we've got buyers just sitting, ready to go. We just can't find inventory That's for them. Crazy. We can make it easy for yeah. you. Call, call me up and tell me what you want for it and where it is, and we'll sell it uh, <laughs> without going through the... Never would have thought we'd be sitting here right. and not having, literally, having people make 20, 30, 40 offers on a property in a day. It's, it's the craziest Sight thing. Engine. Side unseen I've ever seen. But you do have Rambling River Drive yep. up in Sanford. Where is this in Sanford? This is in Rivercrest, just okay. off the Markham Wood Corridor, uh, right off the river oh, there. Oh, nice right, place. Yep. We don't have it listed. It's going to be live on Friday. Yeah. So, Perfect. Uh, yep, this will be fresh on the market when this show airs. It's yep. just it's over an acre property, 3,700 and change square feet. Beautiful, all updated. Um, luscious acre property on the water. It's really nice. It's, I think and so. it won't last. You know, it'll yeah. be... I think sometimes when people think Sanford as well, they think of, of sort of that downtown area. Sanford and Lake Mary kind of come together there really on the sprawl, west of yeah. I-4. And I mean, it's just a, a really great part of part of Seminole County to live in. And, and great, great schools too, really. Great schools, beautiful land. And now the transportation, like we're talking about the Lake County property. Now that they put the expressway, oh, yeah. Lake County is no longer a 45 exactly. minute right. drive anymore. So Absolutely right. All the, that whole area where this property is located <laughs> is just miles away from the new 429 extension shirts. And I don't know why I sent my kid to private school with, I have all the great schools. What did you do with your kids, private or public? Minor, minor in public. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh, my son was out of school when we moved here. Oh, yeah. so. Never mind. <laughs> was, I, feel like I, I feel like I made a bad Mine starts mistake. high school next year. Is that right? Oh, yes. Oh, my That'll goodness. It's going to be crazy. So if you'd like to see any of these properties, Alex and Frank will show them to you literally today. Here is the phone number, 407-205-0400. So what is, what's kind of the average time right now it's taking to sell a house? I mean, is there still a, you know, on average 20 days or literally every listing getting offers pretty much right no, away? I think I'm about seven, eight days. Is that right? Yeah, right in that period. I mean, there's always going to be the, you know, the outliers, which are going to be sort of an anomaly in a certain part, which will take longer. But in general, um, my stuff is going. I just sold one last week in the Alico Lakes. One million forty nine thousand mm. sold within hours. Is that right? Yeah. So, and, but, and everyone thinks it's a great time to be a, a real estate agent, and I guess on the listing side it, it can be. But for a buyer's agent, it, this can also present challenges because yeah, you're yeah, you're, sure. you're having trouble getting your offers accepted for the buyers you're working with. Let's say that I'm I'm watching the show right now and I, and I'm thinking about putting an offer on a place. What is something I can do to separate my offer from the other thirty? 
I'd like to know the answer to that. I mean, I'm yeah. seeing really personal letters that mm. come with offers now, um, you know, pleading this family with a newborn or we're retired vets. Yeah. I mean, that that does, you know, some to some sellers, that does make a difference. Other than that, make as aggressive offers as you can. People are waiving contingencies, maybe giving the seller some flexibility as far as their exit's mm. concerned, because now, you know, that's why I say get us involved early so we can time everything. Right. We got to get the, the seller into a new place as well. So I would say maybe flexibility at closing time could really help influence a seller yeah. to, what do you to, think? to go one way or the other. The flexibility with closing time and also, you know, talk to the other agent if you're representing a buyer and find out what's important to your seller. What do we got to do to put this deal together? Mm -hmm. And that's it. I mean, you know, you can only try, really, at the end of the day. But, you know, if they could stay there, sometimes a post-occupancy agreement, I'm not a huge fan of it, but occasionally you have to resort to that. And if they've got enough money, you could waive the appraisal contingency and lighten up on the inspections, probably breeze through it unless there's something monumental. All right. Just make the deal as sweet as possible. So clearly, at some point, the sellers that you're working with have to move somewhere else and move their family somewhere else. What are you seeing sellers do now? Are they buying another house? Are they renting for a couple years? What are you seeing most of them do? I have some sellers that have a second home, mm. so that's or maybe a condo at the right. beach that's uh, taking care of some of the problem. But no, it's a it's a it's a frenzy to if they're trying to rent something. As we spoke about, the rents are once they hit the market, they're right. gone. So, like I said, just make sure you get us involved early sure. so we can have the whole picture and help time things. I keep um, hearing about these escalation clauses that buyers yeah. are putting in there. Can you help me understand exactly what this escalation clause I, I, I is? I don't use it. I don't no. like it. I think it's intimidating. I don't think that's the best route to really take. Um, I what think is it? It, basically what it is is you put a dollar amount in there, and if the other person supersedes it, you're going to supersede it. But I don't, I don't really trust that too much, quite it's honestly. It's yeah. So if he and I are both trying to buy the same house, and I'll say, I'm going to give you 5000 over what Frank's offered you at the end of the day. Right. That's the escalation clause. So we're just asking people, I agree with you, I mean, that really muddies the water. And yeah. if you've got 30 contracts, I mean, last week we had 30 contracts on one property that took a, a spreadsheet and a couple CPAs to go through them and look at all the different <laughs> nuances of everything. But, yeah. And that was in there a lot. So we're just saying, you know, put your best foot forward. Um, otherwise, you could continuously be going back with two different people with escalation clauses and when you're the listing agent right now and the buyer comes to you and says, okay, what should I list my house for? And you come back and say, 500,000. I, I think 500 is an aggressive number, and, uh, but I don't think we should go any higher. And then someone comes in and offers 550. How, I mean, is that a disappointed client at that point or are they happy? You know, well, why wouldn't we list it at 580 then, Alex? How are you having that talk with the seller? I've had this and probably in your price range, it's even more so. so Say you have a house that you think you're going to sell for eight hundred thousand yeah. dollars, and you ask eight fifteen for it, and you get two or three buyers involved in it. Maybe they negotiate the price down or take it there. I think in this market you can list it for seven fifty and get fifty buyers involved in it, and they drive the price up above the eight fifteen <laughs> yeah. mark or whatever. Right. I mean, it's really it's a, it's a I got it's you. an art right now, and that's yeah, science. Just take a look at the landscape and. What do you think, Frank? It's interesting because the dynamic is very difficult to really sort out because I've had some sellers say to me, look, the house, I said, your house is worth around seven, maybe seven and a quarter. Right. And they said, well, I want to list, list it at 780. Quite honestly, a lot of times they have been right. But the problem is you've got some outside factors. You've got an appraisal, unless you're willing to waive the appraisal. Mm -hmm. And then the buyer has got to be having the ability to pay that overages if they live, do that. So the rules are not the same. We really had a we tool ourselves, our thinking is a little bit different. Every situation is going to be different. I mean, we've priced homes that are spot on and don't get the same traction, they'll sell. And then we've got some that in a million years, I wouldn't think it'd be getting another mm -hmm. 30, 40, 50,000, but it did. I, mean, I, think, I think it's fascinating, this question, because what I'm hearing Alex say is, look, if, if it's really worth 800 or even 820, you list at 770, and now, and now we're gonna have the, the buyers all fighting over each other, so it doesn't necessarily, benefit you to list a higher, and I've never heard of anyone look at it that way, but I understand what you're saying, because maybe you're getting more people into the fray to, to bid the house up. I think that's that's a fascinating that's, thought. We, I learned this just before the yeah. true feeding friends that we had a couple of properties right. that we just couldn't get a, a contract to stick on, so we lowered the price, and here they come. You wow. know, Unbelievable. So what, what, what is the right strategy, you think, Frank, when you're listing it? Well, we haven't changed anything when we list a property right now. We don't need to spend the kind of money we always do with advertising mm -hmm. and spending and, and um, photography, but we do because we want to have a very consistent brand on my sure. end. 
So we want to showcase the house the best we can. We want to thin it out as good as we can. We really haven't done too much staging in this environment. We, I'm a huge fan of staging, but we really haven't had to do too much yeah. of that. So in general, you're pretty relaxed in what you have to do with the house, short of it really being in bad shape. Um, you just give it your best shot, highlight, get all the bullet points going about what's going to make this house sell. And we're breaking records. I mean, I sold one recently that was 320 a square foot. Wow. So my average price per square foot is extremely high now. I, have to, I haven't checked exactly what it is, but they're well over $200 a square foot all day long. Frank Benevento, thank you, buddy. As always, great job today. Oh, thank you. Alex Stefano, as always, my friend. It's good to see you. Yes. Two of the best in Seminole County. Not that they only work in Seminole County, but I know two of the absolute best agents in Seminole County. Thank you both for being here. I always appreciate seeing you both. If you have questions about anything we saw today, you want to see the houses you saw here, it's 407 205 04 Zero, zero. If you're not paying cash, don't even start this house hunt until you have a pre-approval letter in your hand, or I can almost guarantee you, you will not be getting the house of your dreams. Dallas Lehman will do that for you this weekend, so you can start that house hunt. Thank you, as always, for joining me here every Saturday for You Have Real Estate. We'll see you again right here next week for more You Have Real Estate. Just in case you haven't heard lately, mortgage rates are at historic lows. In my entire career, I have never seen them dip this low. Now may be your best time to own your dream home and stop throwing your hard-earned money away on rent, refinance to a lower rate to save money on your monthly mortgage payment, or pay off high interest credit card and other debt. My name is Dallas Lehman, president of You Have Mortgage. No one knows when rates will begin to climb again, but they will and can go back up quickly. Call me today so we can tailor your historic rate and program. Our premier under one roof team is here to provide our very best for you. Do you want to feature your home for free on our show? My name is Vivian Lehman with You Have Realty, and we've come up with a comprehensive marketing strategy to get your home sold quickly. Whether buying or selling, we have all the resources for your real estate transaction, builder, insurance, title, mortgage, and we might even know Justin Clark all under one roof. Call us at 407-205-0400. I'm here every week to answer your calls, questions, and provide your free pre-approvals. I really enjoy helping people celebrate refinancing to a historic low rate or purchasing their dream home. Now for me, this is my 2.875% 30-year smile from my own home purchase this month because I like to practice what I preach. I also like to share great news. Call me today and let's get you your best loan scenario while these historic low rates last. It only makes sense to get started now. Your Under One Roof team is always here to help you. Hey Central Florida, it's Carter Burks here with Carter Water Home Solutions. Have you ever noticed how your water may have a smell to it or a bad taste? Well, that's not how water's supposed to be. It should be tasteless and odorless. It should be clear. And at Carter Water, we're here to help you find a way to make it that way. You can go to carterwater.com, request a free water test. No obligation, no pressure. For your no-cost, no-obligation water test, give us a call today at 407-205-0400. Or go to carterwater.com. Be happy to come by.